Hi, welcome back. My name is Joel and today's lesson is learning how to get photos into your computer. Alright, thanks for joining me today. It's great to see your wonderful smiling faces. Now, today we're going to discuss about getting and importing photographs from various places to your Apple computer and specifically to start with photos. And there's so many ways to do this, um, but I want to keep it simple. And we're going to discuss getting photos, maybe you have them on a flash drive, uh, maybe someone gave them to you, or maybe you have uh, a CD that you want to import from because someone gave it to you. I don't know why, um, or a memory card from a camera, and there's multiple ways to do this, but no matter which way you do it, uh, the process is relatively the same. So let's go ahead and walk through some of that. Now I don't have a camera here next to me because I'm using it to record, so I do have the memory card from the camera. And depending on the memory card that you use, your Mac may have an SD card slot in it. If it doesn't, I would highly recommend to find and purchase a, a, an SD card or a memory card reader. Uh, a lot of times it has multiple slots in there for various different uh, media. Um, you might have compact flash, you may have a Sony camera, you may have an SD card. So pick up one of these, you can get them for you know 20 bucks on Amazon. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, when we go into photos, uh, we're going to open this up. And if you've never been to photos before, this is essentially what you're going to see the very, very first time. It says, welcome to photos. To get started with photos, do any of the following. Uh, get, connect a camera or memory card, drag pictures directly into photos, choose import from the file menu, or turn on iCloud photos and preferences. Now today we're going to discuss mostly these three choices here. Um, iCloud Photos is a whole nother beast and we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Now let's go ahead and start with kind of the old school, probably what you won't uh, be accustomed to um, that, too, that often, and that's good old fashioned CD. Now a lot of the newer Apple computers don't even have CD players anymore, or optical drives. So. I have one of the, the Apple Super Drives here, which allows me to connect, and we're gonna toss the CD in just like that. And whenever you connect an external hard drive, or a camera, or memory card, or a CD, and you plug it into your computer, uh, nine times out of 10, it should show up on your desktop. So in, in a moment here, we should see it pop up on the screen, and here it is. Now if we go ahead and double click, on the icon, we're gonna see all of the photos that are on that disk. And it's kinda of slow, so it'll take a, a moment for it to actually show the thumbnails here. Um, but like Photo said, we can go ahead and drag the pictures directly into photos. And there's multiple ways to do that. Um, I'm gonna just do a keyboard shortcut. I'm gonna click on one of these photos in here to let the computer know that I'm selected in here. I can do the keyboard shortcut, Command A. Um, I could click and hold and drag my cursor and do a marquee selection. Uh, multiple ways to actually do selection. That's covered in a whole nother video. But for the moment, we're gonna do a Command A, and I'm just gonna move this window to the side here, and we're gonna drag these photographs right into photos. And as we do that, we'll pop back over here. It'll be a moment for it to recognize the pictures. And if we click on imports over here, this is where it's going to show us the photographs being imported. Now there's a little progress bar or little indicator in the top left that has a little circle that says importing. And this could take a few minutes. Um, depending on how many photos there are, uh, how big the files are, uh, there's a, a it could take a couple moments, so we're just gonna go ahead and wait. Now, as they start importing, um, they're gonna all go into the library of photos. And that's pretty much it. If you're looking to import photos from a disk, you can literally just open it up and drag and drop it into photos. And that is going to copy them into your photos library. All right, so you notice that Photos successfully imported 24 files. It gives us a little notification letting us know that it's completed from the disk. So let's go ahead and do the flash drive. So we plugged in our flash drive. We go ahead and double click on that on the desktop. And again, we can just select a few photos here. We don't have to do them all. And we can just drag them into photos. Now what's cool about this is 
if it's the same exact photo, it will actually recognize and use the metadata, all of the uh, information about that photo to let you know if one already exists. So on this example, I had the same, or some of the same photos on that CD as the, as well as the, the flash drive. So as I drag that in, it says, hey, hold up, it's already recognizing some of these photos. Do I wanna import this duplicate photo or don't import? So for this, I'm gonna say, nope, I don't wanna import that. And then it's going to ignore that one photo from the flash drive and there it is. And again, another notification saying it's imported and it's done. Now, another cool thing is I don't even have to open up photos in order to drag it there first. And what I mean by that is if I go ahead and close out of photos and quit it, if I open up the finder here and I still have my flash drive, if I select again some of these photographs, I can actually just drag them down to photos on the dock and it will actually do the importing for me. Now, when I do that, it gives up, it gives a little bit different uh, menu here. It says, okay, hey, uh, you have one photo already imported and we're not gonna want to import that, but it says you have nine new photos. So we can ignore that one and we can just focus on the nine new photos. And in the top right, it says import all new photos. Um, now there's some other options along here too. We can import directly into the big giant photo library or we can import directly into a particular album which is which is kind of nice for organization right off the bat. Uh, we'll get to that later as we cover the organization but this is all for importing. So right now we're gonna leave it as library and we're gonna do import all new photos. And then same process, it goes through and now it's gonna import those photographs into the main photo library and Voila, it's done. Now, one last thing we'll cover with the memory card. And as you guessed it, the process is gonna look almost identical. Uh, first, we will eject both of these CD and flash drive. So on the finder here, if I scroll down, I can actually click the little eject button uh, on the left-hand side in the sidebar, or I can right-click on the flash drive here and do uh, eject, or another way, I can actually drag this down to the trash can and notice how it turns into an eject symbol. So trash can, if I drag this down, it changes it to eject and that also allows me to eject it. And it's really important, especially for flash drives to eject because if you just pull the plug on it, you have potential to corrupt and lose information on the flash drive. And we don't want that to happen, especially with your memory card. So let's do the same thing. Um, I have my memory card here and I'll go ahead and plug in my memory card reader. We'll plug this in. And because Photos is already open and it recognizes that it's a uh, digital memory card, again, it pulls up the, the device in the left-hand side. So it says, hey, looks like you have a memory card from my Canon camera, and it's selected on the left-hand side, and it shows me, hey, there's 2,360 new items on this flash drive. And another option that popped up, because the computer sees this as a memory card, it says, hey, do you wanna open photos for this device? And what that means is, every time I plug this same exact memory card in, this is a preference that will automatically launch photos for me so that they don't have to manually do it every single time. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that. Um, uh, to do that. And again, we're gonna do it into the library. And here, um, you know, I have a lot of different photos on here from multiple events, really. So here, for example, is a trip to Duluth. And I can go in and I can individually select photographs to import. I don't necessarily have to do everything because there may be some pictures that I don't want to import. So as you can see, as I go through and click some of these photographs, it's putting that little checkbox or that little blue circle in the bottom right to indicate that I have imported or I'm wanting to import these photographs. Now, as I scroll down farther, um, you know, clicking one at a time can get kind of tedious. So you're able to do a multiple selection. So let's go down to an, an, another event here, still Duluth. And by, if you haven't been to Duluth, it's, it's amazing. I mean, go there, it's, it's a nice little getaway. Um, it's cold, but you know, it's Minnesota. Uh, as we scroll down, here's some more photographs from um, 
here is a concert that uh, I videotaped and took some photos at. So let's say that I want to do multiple photos of this. So instead of clicking every single one, I can actually select multiple photos two different ways. I can click and hold outside of the folder or fo uh, photo and make what's called a marquee selection. So it's creating this little box and anything that box touches is going to be selected. So that's option number one to select multiple photos. Option number two is if I click on the first one, hold down shift on the keyboard, and then click on the end one, it does everything in between. So sh holding down shift does a sequential order of selecting photographs. And those techniques happen across the computer everywhere. So if you're dealing with uh, files in your finder um, or other applications, uh, this, the keyboard shortcuts and those, uh, those tricks are the, essentially the same. So as I scroll down, I've selected all of the photos that I, I want. Um, here's, we'll just add a few more from the, the ice castles. And with these, I'll just go ahead and click on them as well individually, because maybe I don't want them all. And so now in the top right, I have a few different options. Instead of import all new items, it now gives me the option to import the 48 selected items. That way I'm, I'm picking and choosing what I want to currently bring into photos and I can always go back and re-import the ones I didn't do at a later point in time. Now it also gives this little checkbox to delete items after import. My preference and recommendation would be not to check that. Just, just leave it alone. I wish they didn't even have it. Um, I always like to have a safety net and if something were to go wrong during the import process or something happened to the computer as it was importing, the last thing I wanted to do is have an error and then also delete it on the memory card and that just, we just don't want that. So don't even think about checking that, it's not worth it. So we're gonna go ahead and do import 48 selected items. And again, in the top left, really quick, it's gonna show us a little progress bar of it importing. And whenever you're importing from a, uh, a memory card or a flash drive, it goes really fast. Um, the CD drive goes super, super slow. So just, uh, just keep that in mind, but you probably won't be doing this too often. You'll most likely be doing it from the, a camcorder or a, a memory card or a flash drive or a hard drive, something like that. So essentially, that is the process of importing photos into photos. And as we go through here, I can scroll through them and I can see all of the photos. And what's cool also is it'll actually split up the photos based off the date. And we'll get more into that about the, uh, the organization of your photos um, when we do another video for um, organizing the albums and, and all of that. But just know that it's pulling the date from the camera that took the photo. So if the date on your camera is wrong, you're gonna have pictures sorted automatically wrong based off of date. So, thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial was helpful and importing. And uh, if you like what you saw, go ahead, hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time.